I think th- that Jackson should do it. No, Kaya. Kaya, you do it. <laughs> what episode is this? 151. 151. All right, welcome back to episode 151 of the official podcast, the only podcast not owned by China yet. Let's go. Let's talk about it. I want to talk about this <laughs> before we get bought that by being Tencent said, and we have yeah, to apologize. We're, we're, up, we're up for, uh, you know, good negotiations with some Chinese companies, depending on what number they're going to throw at us. So it may not stay that way for too long. I hate Winnie the Pooh. Just just throwing that out there. Really can't stand the character. Ji Jinping is we're not, big we're buff, not handsome. Dedicated. Mm. Oh, yeah. What? He's he's my favorite final boss in life. Love that guy. What were you saying, what's the whole? Th- what's the whole thing about him with Winnie the Pooh? Is it just because he looks like Winnie the Pooh? Or <laughs> it, does he have yeah. some like childlike wonder it's, towards it's not, Winnie the Pooh? It's obsession? not even that far. He got made fun of by some high schoolers in China who said that he looked like Winnie the Pooh, and he got so butthurt about it, he banned Winnie <laughs> the Pooh. Why would you get... What, why would you get butthurt about that? That's a great comparison. I know, it's cute. <laughs> But he got so mad, he banned it in all of China. <laughs> I got compared to this lovable character, adored by millions across yeah, the but, globe. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, but, but Winnie is a doofus. Like, he just goes around going, where's my honey? I need honey. Delicious honey. That's basically his entire personality. Oh, bother. Yeah, but getting offended and upset over a car- being, like, associated with a cartoon character is a bit... I don't know. It's a bit less charming than just accepting it, I guess. Yeah, you well, yes, as you will find, come to find out, <laughs> dictators are rarely charming men. <laughs> They're kind of assholes. <laughs> Surely you have to be a little bit charming to get to that position, though. At the beginning, but once you do hold the reins, you can be the least charming motherfucker on planet. Oh, uh, this is fun. So is is um, Blizzard still getting protested in their subreddit? I haven't checked like oh, in Blizzard's a week. A, yeah, it's a straight fucking dumpster fire for Blizzard. They keep like doing even worse. They banned like some college students now and they're like just sticking to their guns on all their bans. So people are still continuing well, to be mad. I don't fucking... think they're sticking to their guns, right? They've been swapping the bans around like the duration of the bans. It went from one year to six months and then they unbanned some college kids, but then then reband them to make it look fair. It, uh, it's kind of hard to follow with how frequently it's changing, but the bands are all up in the air at the moment, from what I understand. Mm. The uh, the fucking U.S. government is now cracking down yeah. on Blizzard. Both sides are are getting up in their ass, saying, "Hey, what you're doing is wrong." They're not it's cracking kind of cool down. To see they just Congress sent them. They, they sent a letter, a strongly yeah, worded letter. Yeah, they sent a letter, letter yeah. a strongly worded letter, the same kind <laughs> where, the... you know, your mom sends the TV station a letter condemning their views. Yeah. I don't think that's going mean, to work. at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, what they are doing technically isn't illegal, but it's pretty fucked up. So they sent so. Blizzard a letter and the NBA, both of them, co-signed by a bunch, including AOC and Ted Cruz. So both sides of the aisle are pretty pissed off at this, surprisingly. Uh... The yeah. Blizzard thing is so I was kind of excited. I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie. I was excited for BlizzCon, but I think they canceled it now. Right? No, no, really? no. No, 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 they no, would no, never cancel BlizzCon. BlizzCon. The, the thing for BlizzCon that's going something. on is there's a bunch of there's a bunch of protesters and rallies getting together to wear uh Hong Kong supporting t-shirts to BlizzCon. Yeah, that's why no, I was I'm pretty, sure that, I'm pretty sure there was some kind of tournament or or press. Oh, Nintendo's in over Nintendo's yeah, 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 Overwatch thing. launch. Yeah, yeah, was canceled. Be- on, <laughs> yeah, they canceled that. Yeah, wonder- Nintendo shot that shit down. There's on their, there's uh, no launch. way that they would cancel BlizzCon because that it's in the same place that Disney hosts their D23. That shit would cost a fortune and would take months of planning, like upfront m- months Where they host and their upfront what? fees. The, the D23 convention, Disney's convention, you know, where they announce all oh. Star Wars shit and shit like that. I didn't know. So when is this then? The BlizzCon? Two, two weeks time, I think. Okay. All right. So it's still oh, lost. Not... You guys got to go. Charlie, Andrew, you guys are there. I'm not going to fly there just for shits and giggles, but if I was you guys, I'd fly there just to record what's happening. Oh, I'd love to, but it's so fucking far away. Is it? Where is it? Aren't tickets sold it's out in California? Anyway? Oh, the opposite coast, right? Okay. I mean, yeah. I'd, mm-hmm. I'd do it, but aren't tickets like long sold out? Don't you have to buy Probably. them many months? No, in well, advance? I don't. Mean- you won't. You won't need tickets. 
Oh, I thought I thought you needed tickets for it. No, you do, but, but just, you won't for this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you could just stand outside and film as people oh, get yeah, kicked yeah, out yeah, yeah. by the Chinese police. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. That's, that's what I was about to say. Surely there's going to be massive protests outside, right? So you can just yeah. all as a group just barge in there and take over. <laughs> it's like the Area 51 raid. They can't stop yeah. us all. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, they they yeah the Area 51 the raid, which was, which was they can't stop us all, all 20 of us who actually showed up. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> Not at all. So this is going to make for a great Man, case study, Area, though. Area 51 was great because they went to the back gate, 20 people, and went, hey, can we come in? And the guy said no, and they went, well, our job <laughs> here is done. And <laughs> <laughs> well, that's to be fair. I mean, what are you gonna do? Bomb rush a bunch of armed military men? <laughs> that's not gonna happen. <laughs> BlizzCon now that may be a, a couple of sweaty nerds announcing a new game. Yeah, you could probably somehow squeeze your way in there. So th it was okay. Th so this is the convention just last year where they announced Diablo Mobile, right? Mobile game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was the, I guess, the first sort of instance of them you know, uh, sucking China's cock and pissing in the Blizzard fans' faces. Yeah, uh, well, I, I, it's been kind of like a pretty fast descent into that kind of attitude over the last, I don't know, six or seven years. It's not something that's just happened out of the blue. They've always kind of been edging towards that audience. So I'm afraid this isn't going to go anywhere. This is cool. And it's been super fun to watch all the memes. I'll be honest, I've been enjoying some of the memes mm. on the Blizzard subreddits, but I don't think this is going to go anywhere. Tencent is so big that they could pretty much seize even all gaming operations entirely and they would still be in the green. They wouldn't even take a hit. That's how big they are. Did you guys know that their gaming platform is much bigger than Steam? They have their own... Uh, yeah, I knew that. They are gigantic. Well, what do they own besides League of Legends? Everything. They own pretty much every gaming company in America well, at they different have percentages. Yeah. Not just Jesus. gaming company, that's what I'm saying. They own pretty much so much business in China and all over the world. Not just in the gaming industry, but Well, I didn't yeah, I didn't know they they were not only in the gaming industry. What else are they in? So they're Tencent in Apple, is right? aren't they they're big in Apple? Everything. So Tencent owns Tencent yeah. Games, which is the thing you guys are usually uh, that gets mentioned in the gaming community is Tencent Gaming owns 5% of Blizzard Activision and wholly owns, entirely owns um, Riot Games. And then there's Tencent, the company that owns Tencent Gaming or Games or whatever it is, and they own fucking everything, man. You guys remember that Men in Black movie, the most recent one? Yeah, man. Tencent that was produced a that. That would not have happened oh. without Tencent's money. They paid for it all. So they're huge. Hmm. They could seize, they could just shut down Blizzard, period. They could just remove the game today and they would still be fine. Which is why I don't think anything's gonna no. change, unfortunately. Yay. <laughs> no, what would we do without Blizzard anymore? Did you see that they uh, kind of like sneak leaked Diablo 4 announcement to kind of try to cover up all this outrage? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, people were calling it on the subreddit before it happened. They were saying, remember, Blizzard is going to release something ahead of BlizzCon to dodge negative press. Yeah, and they did it. They yeah. they leaked the uh, Diablo 4 announcement. So now that's coming out and people are probably going to forget about it. Uh, well, uh, I don't know. Do you think Diablo 4 is more important than China oppressing... <laughs> The yes. opinions of American consumers. I think Knowing so, yeah, American the consumers, average. it absolutely is. Absolutely. I mean, just watch this. Riot Games is now making several new games, right? How many people mm. have you seen quit playing League of Legends or protest Riot Games, which is owned 20 times as much by China as Blizzard is? The difference is, though, Riot Games doesn't double down on, like, you know punishing people for speaking their opinion or anything so far they haven't done anything that sucks the ass of china yeah not yet but so they until have that the same, happens why same, are they going to protest uh, the same patron the same boss is basically my point uh, will, i don't think the fault is very... who owns the which which nation owns the most percentage of a company i think it's what values the company Kai is exaggerating. Own. Tencent owns 5% of Blizzard and makes up 13% of their profit. They're not exactly like the biggest part of these gaming companies. They're Only just 5%? A, yeah, they're just a very small piece of them. It's not like they have to bend over and get rim-jobbed by China or anything like that. They just do. 
No, but they. Well, the, the thing the is, did... Tencent is the, their gateway into China. You have to go through China to be able to access the Chinese right. market. That's two billion people. You will be cut off from that. It's not only the 5%. accounts for thirteen percent of their profit, though. It's not. That's a very small chunk of what they make from the Chinese profit. They do it just because they're making a weird decision to favor thirteen percent over the larger majority. Yeah, but if they could expand I find that. that to, I mean, I don't know how many thought, gamers there are in the wait, U.S., but I'm going to assume if they could convert every, I don't know, young person in China into a gamer, they would more than make up for that percentage. And that... You're like, you're the, wait, just to hmm. confirm, just wait, wait, wait. You're, you're saying Blizzard has a 13% stake in China. Like, that's the, no. their audience is 13%. Oh, yeah. Chinese. That's So for however long Tencent's been on their ass... And Blizzard has been with Tencent. They have made thirteen percent of their revenue from Chinese market. From what I was reading, of course, I don't work at Blizzard. I don't handle their books, but that's what the reports are. I think they're trying to expand. Man, there has to be something to this because every company is bending over backwards. Disney, the NBA, they're all trying to get in on that China market. Yeah, I know. And I think the, I mean, how much China owns of the company is more correlated to how much control they have and how much of a say they get. Like I said, I mean, Tencent owns 100% of Riot Games, so they can literally do whatever they want. Um, well, I guess China's, China has the advantage or they can impose their views because they have a growing market. Like their, their, their uh, economy is like coming into middle class territory. I, I guess the people in China are getting some wealth finally, so they're becoming an actual market for international businesses. So they can kind of push their views that way, just naturally. Like maybe they're not even imposing it on Blizzard. Blizzard just wants to do it because the the audience there is growing. No, oh, maybe I don't know. I mean, you can say whatever you want about Xi Jinping. He's a dictator and all, but his Belt and Road Initiative is certainly working. We should do an ad. Should what do you we? think? Should we not? Sure. It, it's, you know, I'm looking through the pages here. I'm flipping through what's coming up. And I think that the one coming out right now is your expertise, Kaya. Why don't you just start to finish, nail it? You know, ExpressVPN owns 0% of the official podcast, but they own all of my heart. Fuck me, I love ExpressVPN. Anytime I need to access a website when I'm off uh, abroad, say in, I don't know, a, a country that is currently at war with literally every neighbor that it has and it bans websites like Wikipedia, just for shits and giggles and all porn. I sometimes find myself trying to access things just for the mere excitement of seeing that error page that Chrome gives you, telling you, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't connect to the server. And I feel a little warmth in my heart thinking, ah, ExpressVPN does not discriminate. They will help a poor Turkish fella like me. I will access any goddamn website I want with expressvpn.com slash official. Your VPN, easy installation, download it, one-click installation. You literally just put in your password, boom. Done. Same goes for your phone, by the way. Used to be you'd have to fuck around with so many settings. You'd have to... You guys remember those days? You'd have to change your DNS settings in your router, your browser, your phone, your mm. Windows settings, all yeah. independently. You don't have to do that shit anymore. Just download an app. You click a you click a big green button that says go or connect or whatever. You can choose from over hundreds of servers and you just connect to one. Done. Same thing on your phone. You can download the app and you're uh, good to go. And now our campaign is, let's see, I don't even know this by heart because I just pay for ExpressVPN and I like it. You get three months free of the one year. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm not shitting you guys. I like paying for ExpressVPN. Uh, you get three months free of the one year package if you go to expressvpn.com slash official. But you have to go to slash official so they know we sent you. And so they know how much we love them as the official podcast community or just, you know, the Kaya community or just me. I don't care. Expressvpn.com slash official. Get yourself a delicious VPN. You guys know PewDiePie's banned in China? Mm -hmm. Speaking of, if you live in China, there's probably a bunch of stuff you can't watch because it's banned. Why not try yeah, ExpressVPN? No, China's not into banning things. They don't ban things. No. Yeah, they wouldn't do that. Also, I, I always want to wanna work this in because it's a big selling feature to me. If you want to watch Netflix libraries from other countries, you can do it with ExpressVPN. A lot of rights get shuffled around. A lot of different shows on different countries like Canada and Britain. 
That Try too, it. that's really fucking annoying. You know that feeling when you go on Netflix and you uh, search up something and go, oh, I guess this isn't on Netflix. No, it is. Just not in your region. Wait, Get the VPN and watch yeah. it. So what happens, what happens if you VPN into China to watch stuff on Netflix? Is that just like, <laughs> you like get sent there? to the prison. <laughs> <laughs> your subscription is cancelled. It's, it's just a bio documentary <laughs> about Xi Jinping making him look like yeah. a cool bodybuilder. <laughs> They just Photoshop him onto Arnold Schwarzenegger. Man, they're doing some like fucking North Korea style shit. It's crazy. Charlie, you mentioned PewDiePie's band in China. What happened? Yeah, he made a joke about China in a video. So no doubt we'll be banned in China after this episode, but that'll be such <laughs> cool press for us. They care about us. Wait, he's yeah, not like banned yet? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> wait, he's, wait, oh, wait, 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 he's, yeah. he's not banned yet? I thought you said he is. He is. What, what are you talking about? He I just, just said he banned. is. Yeah. Oh, I thought. Oh, so I think Jessica. he showed. Okay, okay. I think he showed some of the PewDie ad, some of the Winnie the Pooh memes, and so South Park mentions China immediately. The next day they get banned. PewDiePie yeah. mentions, mentions China immediately. The next day he gets banned. The NBA, you know, some guy tweeted something critical of China. Not even. I think he tweeted something in support of Hong Kong. Immediately, China cancels a bunch of NBA events. And all the NBA people start shaking and sweating and pissing in their boots. Also, uh, props to South Park for having balls again and doubling down. You saw their response to getting banned in China? Yeah. <laughs> they just put out message after message of fuck you, China, suck my dick. <laughs> props to them. That was great. So... Speaking of dick sucking, though, have you guys been keeping up le with uh, LeBron James? Oh, yeah. No, what happened with that? Yeah, that, LeBron that's what James, I... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, he spoke out on that. He spoke out on the coach who tweeted that thing, called him uneducated and like ignorant <gasps> on the subject. He's our Dennis Rodman. Yeah, he's been, well, kind of pretty much Dennis kinda, Rodman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's like it's like North Korea is China's little kid, and China and Je LeBron James are doing big boy work, but then Dennis Rodman and Kim Jong Un or Kim Jong Il are just doing the fucking little baby shoes. It's so cute. They grew up. So it's not just LeBron, it's... Wait, Charlie, have you seen the videos of Steve Kerr? Mm, no, I don't think so. Oh, those are the best. They look like... You guys remember those old school ISIS hostage videos where they just... They have some guy in an orange jumpsuit who's shaking and sweating and just scared. That's how he looks. So this guy, Steve Kerr, when they ask him about China, that's how he looks. He just starts stumbling and stuttering and he's... Uh, uh, well, China... Um, yeah, um, you know... I don't think we should talk about that. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you imagine if you're in a press conference about some big issue that happened and one of the reporters goes, what do you what do you have to say on uh, the whole situation with China? And your response is just, oh, we shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> I don't I don't think we should discuss it. I mean, that kind of happens a lot. I'm mean, not about China just in general. Yeah, but usually they have like some dodgy answer or non-answer or something like we're working on that or we will address it at a later date. But just to or, say, or, we should talk even they about can it. just they can just play around it like they can kind of be charming. But it sounds like he just went into full hostage mode, like panicked, he did. and just even, even if he even if he joked about it or something, China was gonna kill his just family or something. That was outrageous. The LeBron thing Charlie mentioned, that is very outrageous because that guy had a whole week to come up with a proper response with this whole PR team. And his response basically was, you know, that guy before tweeting, he should have considered how this is going to inconvenience me. You know how difficult my week has been? <laughs> Meanwhile, the protesters are getting <laughs> shot in the chest, point <laughs> blank. They just pulled some 15-year-old girl's corpse out of the river who was dismembered, presumably by the police. But you guys, LeBron is having a tough yeah, but, week. Yeah, I was going to say, but all things considered, LeBron James loses a little bit of money on that. And I think that's the biggest tragedy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here, somebody posted the release from South Park. This is from Matt and Trey Parker. Uh, sorry, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Like the NBA, we welcome the Chinese censors into our homes and into our hearts. We too love money more than freedom and democracy. Xi doesn't look like Winnie the Pooh at all. <laughs> Tune into our 300th episode this Wednesday at 10. Long live the Ch Great Communist Party of China. May this autumn's sorghum <laughs> harvest be bountiful. We good now, China? I don't know what sorghum Sounds is. like Blizzard's official statement after that dude made his statement on uh, yeah. Hearthstone. Did you, did you guys see that? Where Blizzard's official 
Chinese apology. A lot of people think it was written by a Chinese speaker. That's not what I'm yeah. talking about. I'm talking about right after it happened. Oh, they the said other... we will do anything to defend the pride of China. Oh, that that's the yeah. other one. Yeah, that's that was on Weibo or Weibo, whatever their social network is called. And that's why people called them out as being hypocrites, because they made the official yeah. announcement a couple of days ago where they went, OK, you know what? Maybe instead of a one year ban, we can give them a six year ban, uh, sorry, six month ban. But this is not <laughs> politically motivated at all. And people pointed out so. You say it's not politically motivated, but on your Chinese account, you guys said you were going to defend the pride of China. That doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> Mistranslation. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just so plainly fucking transparent. They did that. And then the, the other one that I was talking about is they put up an official apology on, I think, their website. But someone who was bilingual in both Chinese and English... He kind of looked at it and he went, guys, the way that he's stru structuring sentences and wording it, this is totally a Chinese speaker writing this in English because it, <laughs> it was so unnatural. Like the way they wrote it was like, you're probably upset about this thing that happened. We're going to talk about that now instead of just talking about the thing in the sentence. Just really weird sentence structure. <sighs> I, oh, my. I can't believe what how... is China's problem, though? Where does this even come from? They used to be so cool, but now they're being so they're just <laughs> when... being mean for <laughs> what, no reason. What happened to you, China? You used to be cool. I agree. Well, I Hong Kong think... doesn't put out once in a week or so and they get all uppity and angry. <laughs> it's fucked up. Man. Yeah, Ch China yeah, used to be so cool. China. Starving millions and millions of people, you know. Oh, man. You, uh, like if you all, if you want some cool China reading, you should look into the Great Leap Forward. That's a <laughs> that's a real good story. Kaya knows what I'm talking about. The Great Leap oh, yeah. Forward. For those of you who don't know, because a lot of people talk about the bad shit the Chinese government did, like Tiananmen Square and this and that. My favorite is the Great Leap Forward, where their leader sits down and he goes, "Man, there's too many fucking bugs in China, guys." All right, attention all Chinese citizens, literally everyone, whether you're a farmer or you work in a factory or something, your job is to go out and kill bugs. I hate bugs. They're the worst. So fucking everyone goes out and they kill bugs. But then, or no, it's birds. Sorry, birds. They go out oh, and they kill. That's a big jump. It is. It, it is. But it, I, it's relevant. It's relevant. So he goes, <laughs> birds are the fucking worst. They eat our crops and they fly around. And they shit on everything. Go out and kill birds. Fuck birds. Oh. So everyone in China sits up and they get all their shit and they go out and kill birds. Guess what? No birds to eat bugs now. So all the bugs just eat their crops and everyone dies of hunger. <laughs> it's so fucking bafflingly incompetent. It wasn't even stupid. inadvertent. I mean, there was downright genocide in there too, making people uh, bury was. their children alive. So they would have more uh, food oh. for the rest. Great stuff. Good stuff, China. <laughs> and it, there were other things in it where uh, the leader was like, guys, we need steel. We need metal working. Melt down all your metal items and tools because we got to make like weapons and shit. So all the farmers melt down their tools and parts of their home and shit. And then they don't do anything with it. So now they have no food and no way to get food. <laughs> and so they just starve and die. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I, I implore you to read The Great Leap Forward. It is one of the most bafflingly incompetent movements in political history. Uh, every top, single <laughs> every single place on the earth has stuff like that. Let's remember the good times with China with Jackie Chan and Chow Yun Fat kicking ass in Hong Kong. <laughs> what? Hong Kong's not China anymore. I know. That's the whole point. Yep. Yeah. Oh my God, you are a double agent, Charlie. Are you in here trying to <laughs> manipulate us? Hong Kong shall remain free, you motherfucker. He's trying to change our history. He's trying to change our perception on the mm -hmm. uh, on the past. Oh, those poor fuckers. All I know man. is I just need I need to wait for what LeBron says next. That's where I form all of my opinions. Yeah, because as you know, every celebrity and famous person you know should dictate what you think and how you believe in stuff. I wish celebrities would stop talking about their opinions. I Just know. all of them. No, any of them. okay. It's so to useless. Be fair, to be Why? fair, the public won't let them. Uh, for example, Demi Lovato just got fucking annihilated on Twitter like a month ago because some someone commented, what are her thoughts on like Palestinian conflict? She's like, well, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> and so the... So the tw what? <laughs> Selena Gomez doesn't know anything about the how, Palestinian conflict. How dare Demi you? <laughs> that makes me angry. I've listened to all her albums and I was getting some very strict Palestinian vibes from that. <laughs> when, I, when I heard her song, Can't Stop Loving You, I just knew that was about Israel. I just no, knew. 
Wow, you're so wrong. It's about Hamas. Jesus Christ. No wonder she had to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, uh, Charlie, totally remember, remember the entire Taylor media Swift. collapsing on Taylor Swift because she, for the longest time, didn't mm-hmm. want to give her political opinions. And everyone started calling her white yeah. supremacist <laughs> solely exactly. because she just kept out of it. Insane. No, and I, she, she, she did fine. She did fine by staying out of it. Celebrities are capable of staying out of it. And not, not, now she did, which I... She didn't have to, though. No, but she did. I mean, the, I know she didn't there's have plenty to. of other celebrities who, who, who don't, and that's perfectly respectable. I, know. I don't know why every other celebrity I, can't. I call this the law of Keanu. Just look at Keanu Reeves. I don't fucking know what his politics are, yeah. and I love him. We all love him. Across the aisle, everyone loves Keanu. For oh, in the any fucking, any day now, you're going to have that same Instagram commenter asking Keanu about his, mm-hmm. yeah. his perspective on Palestinian yeah. conflict. Cancel culture is going to try to worm their way in there however they can. And if Keanu makes one wrong sentence during an interview, that he's just done, dead in the water. Oh, he's so no, fucked. That poor man. He's like the... The Moby Dick of cancel culture, like they just can't get him. You know those photos of him <laughs> hover-handing women? He's so fucking careful. Yeah. He is the Neo. He's the chosen one to avoid cancel culture. But those agents, they're coming for him, man. He's going to have to dodge a whole lot of bullets in bullet time. <laughs> Maybe the hover hand is some kind of like misdirection. He's actually packing heat down there. He's like got, got a full <laughs> erection going on. Yeah. Through the pants. Maybe he gets off on it. Maybe he's like, oh, I'm so close to touching her, but I'm not touching her. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Power move. <laughs> Stroking her aura. He loves the, so bad. He loves the thrill, the danger of it. Uh, oh, I don't God. even know if Keanu Reeves has ever even had an orgasm. He's, he just seems <laughs> he's so pure. So- <laughs> He's the kind of guy where if you ask him, he's like, no, that's disgusting. That's filthy. Yeah, that's, I respect women. I, I wouldn't fuck them. <laughs> Ugh. You put your penis in there? Ugh. That's where babies come from. Gross. Yeah, that poor man. God, I love him. Yeah. I wonder how long till he bows down to China. <laughs> <laughs> Count yeah, look, I mean, down the days. He, he doesn't just kill a bunch of Chinese people in the latest uh, John Wick, so maybe yeah, he's still good gang, to go. Yeah, it's a whole gang, isn't it? One of the gangs is a Was it the triad? Chinese gang. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That's why guy, in your movies, that's why in your movies and your games, you always have to make the bad guys Russian, because they just don't care. They just do not give a shit. Mm. Think about that. How long in our culture... American culture specifically has it always just been like default bad guy is Russian. It's I mean, the there, there was some wavering. The accent but... is just fun. The way they oh, talk yeah. uh, in, in a bad guy, I will destroy your country with this nuclear weapon it's so I acquired. <laughs> it's fun. It's such an intimidating accent. Like we wavered a bit during 9 11 times where all the bad guys were Middle Eastern, but I, ju- I just think that the default bad guy in American what movies is German? Russian. No, because that yeah, implies German. Hitler, and we don't want to. We don't want to do that. That'll alienate markets. You know what I'm saying? No, but, well, I, I think it How just got making old. Hitler I mean, a bad guy alienate markets. <laughs> yeah. people, people don't even want to see or talk or think about Hitler anymore. Even if he's the bad guy, they'll still what go, "Oh, Hitler." Hitler. We lose the neo Nazis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, no, the, the seven clan members still alive. They all they'll tune out. That's real, though. Think think how many people today are like, don't even want to mention Hitler's name because they're like, we don't talk about that anymore. We don't bring what? that guy up. I can't think of anyone. Really? I think I get that. compared to Hitler like 12 di- times a day. What? It's the most maybe I'm just thinking about reference on the maybe internet. I'm just about the, maybe I'm just thinking about the really like leftified pussy people, the same group. Where, like, don't Everyone's even calling that. everyone Hitler. Yeah. They call yeah, everyone everything. Nazis. They don't say Hitler. They don't say he who shall not be named. No, they say you are literally Hitler. It's been a <laughs> staple just reference to everything. I think yeah, the last you, time... What reality are you living in, Andrew? I don't know, maybe I've <laughs> Why been Why are you trying to defend then? Hitler so much? <laughs> <laughs> Look, all, all I'm we saying We need to is... talk about him more. <laughs> <laughs> He's been pushed out of the media, you guys. It's, it's not cool. <laughs> I think it's all no started with that about the good things. Indiana Jones movie where they demonize the good Nazis. Yeah, what if he wanted to use the Ark of the Covenant for good? You don't know. <laughs> uh, There's so many games with Hitler as a bad guy as well, like the main villain. 
I, I think it's like pretty much in every media. That's true. It was a bad guy. Well, well I know. I know, a uh, I know in Germany, you can't even talk or show Hitler. That's why uh, Wolfenstein was censored. They removed mm -hmm. his mustache and all that shit. Sh the, the, the shameful of it. Yeah. But you would think you would think by this point, like how long ago was that? 70 years? You think they would say, OK, yeah, we fucked up. Let's move on. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, uh, obviously, t today's generation still having to carry the shame of that is fucking stupid. But I don't think Hitler is going to go out of fashion anytime soon. Man, imagine, like, you gave, you just gave birth to a child, you name him Adolf, you love the kid. He, he's interested in art, he always finger paints and you hang his shit on your fridge. Would you ever think that one day that kid would become the synonym for evil? Like, it, he becomes a bigger reference for evil than even Satan himself. Your child. That has to be a weird feeling. Yeah, but it's also like a, a proud feeling, I imagine. Like, holy <laughs> shit, I, I made that. That's mine. I don't know I if I'd be happy evil. about that. Uh, it's, it's an accolade. Not a great one or anything, but it, it is an accolade. Yeah, but not like an Oscar. It's more like you're the worst mother ever. <laughs> like, literally. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you spawned the worst person to ever live. Well, surely that's how like parents of serial killers feel. Like John Wayne Gacy's uh, like parents, surely they must feel deep shame. Or they, any I don't think really. so, man. So I don't think they ever feel shame because if you ever listen to these people, they always have mommy issues, and it's always you know you listen to them and their parents are genuinely fucked up. Like oh, my mom used to belt me and beat me and she would dress me up in girls clothes and she would yell at True. how she's gonna cut my dick off and she would make me hide in the closet when she had friends over my dad would rape me and you go wow well you really tried your best to make him a serial killer and it worked congrats ma'am <laughs> so i don't know what hitler's mom must have done do you think the shame though could have been avoided if maybe as a kid he was growing up with some great home-cooked meals oh absolutely <laughs> oh yeah Maybe maybe Charlie could recommend a service that we could all partake in that would have some great home cooked meals in it. Yeah, that service is going to be Blue Apron, delivery to your doorstep, fresh ingredients, simple to follow, and it's always very good. Mhm. Mm Go on. What what else? Yeah. Go ahead. Well, do a whole right. by I yourself. This I want to see. Be a collaborative. We'll we'll stage whisper. We'll help you out, but I want you to do it. All right. Well, Blue Apron's convenient for anyone of all ages and all sizes. It gives you big portions with fresh, great ingredients. Cooking has never been so easy. <laughs> Why uh, does it sound like you're talking <laughs> down to me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys ready? There's some big ingredients. <laughs> you gotta learn this stuff someday, Jackson. Okay, it's not that difficult. <laughs> well, teach me, teach me how to cook, Charlie. What do I need? <laughs> Well, you need Blue Apron, Jackson. The menu is carefully designed and tested by our test kitchen chefs. Each test kitchen uses unique specialty ingredients to bring chef quality recipes to your dinner table. To start making delicious brag worthy meals at home, with no hassle, try Blue Apron. Get $60 off when you visit blueapron.com slash official. It's a better way to cook one of the best in... Uh, Jesus. Uh, lost my place. You're okay, you're okay, keep going. Yeah, you got it. Come on. I like the zesty beef and nochi. What do you guys like on the menu? <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to the cheesy pesto baked cavatelli. I'd really like to eat the za'atar chicken because I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, there's some I, interesting names. Yeah, there's some weird names here. Yeah, I like the autumn pork roast and vegetables. Oh, we fucked mm, up. It, None of us went for the mushroom maze men. That sounds oh. like a final boss in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> You can find it more does, delicious yeah. looking meals over at blueapron.com slash official. These, these do look delicious, though. Mm -mm. They, they always do. do. Yeah, I can't wait for uh, Dark Souls 4 to come out so I can fight the Mushroom Maze men. Uh, that's blueapron.com slash official. You never eat the same thing twice. That's their guarantee, so go there. Blueapron.com slash official. Learn to cook, goddammit, Jackson. Boys, I've legitimately recently started cooking again often, and I can tell you it's very satisfying and rewarding. If you Forget if you feel lazy, lost in life, start cooking. It it's very nice. It's a nice feeling. Cooking is a little bit little bit fun. more work, especially if it. you're a little tipsy. But for the life of me, I've still I'm for years I've not found a way to not cry like a bitch when I'm cutting onions.
It's annoying me so much. I it's love impossible. onions. <laughs> it really is. So I, I have one of those protective well, no, I glasses. Mean, it, it actually is. It's like it's no, biological. It's it you, is impossible. You, you, if you, Kai, when you cut your onion, you cut the top and bottom, right? You yeah, I know you're not supposed to. I, I've seen the Gordon yeah. Ramsay video, but I also hear that's a myth, and you're supposed to cut them this way or not that way. And but from what I've looked into, it, it's just no matter how you cut it, the the th stuff that really makes your eyes burn is gonna get released either way mm -hmm. because you have to chop it at the end of the day, and that's a problem. So I, I have actually thought about ordering one of those little diving goggles so I don't have to cry anymore. I like raw onions. Do you guys ever eat raw onions? Raw Fuck onions? yeah, bro, dude. Like take Charlie. a big chomp out of an onion? Yeah. No, you don't. I've you done can. that a couple times. I, Charlie, I don't believe you. Chop them into rings and then dip them a little bit into ketchup or uh, mustard. They taste delicious. The fuck is... Ugh. Yeah, like I, I like raw onion as a topping, like if uh, it's on a salad or a burger, but I wouldn't take a bite out of an onion. Is that what you're talking and about? You haven't lived. Yeah, it's a nice snack. I, I really don't believe you. I hey, most people it. can't really? actually do that. It's too disgusting and acidic. Yeah, how, it's, how it's you... painful. It's just not why do you do that bad. <laughs> why, would, why would you do it then? Yeah, it's eating, very good eating for this you. sucks and it doesn't taste good. But you have weird eating habits. If you're how, chomping it, down on some spice onion. for a hypochondriac, that's like the literally one of the healthiest things you can ever bite into is an onion. That'd be right up the alley of a hypochondriac to just be gnawing down on onions. Mm, I, well, yeah, okay. Well, mm, yeah, Dude, onions taste good. Health, I, health obsessed person. Even when I put it into some other food, I always have to snack a little bit on the onions that I've just cut a ring or two. They just taste so good. That's, I love onions. Yeah, that's fine. Too like I I like onions a lot, both cooked, uncooked, whatever. But just to eat a whole onion just as a snack, I I don't. Well, see Jesus, how I didn't you do say that. I've ever eaten the whole thing like an apple. Okay, oh, but, well that's not impressive. But you said you've bitten into onions, right? Yeah. So now how, you're just wasting much, onions. Why, yeah, why much, don't you finish your onions? How much of the onion <laughs> do you eat in one sitting? Well, it depends. I don't eat the whole thing in one sitting. It goes across multiple meals over the week. Wait, so you keep coming back to the same? Half eaten onion. <laughs> it's been in his pantry for weeks. It's no, what are you talking? Like I'll bite it and then use it. So you bite oh, the onion okay. and then cut the rest up and use it. Well, yeah. When I ha I haven't done it in a while, but when I did back in my living in the apartment, that's what I did. It's just onion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I don't know why whole... this is so hard to. to... No, I, I I understand eating a sliver or a shaving or a cut or a piece, but to just take a chomp out of the onion, that's. That's yeah, too much. like taking a bite out of like garlic or something, just like chomping on some garlic. It's they do that too. Very outlandish. There's nothing it's like eating that. a multivitamin. It's, <laughs> it's really good for you. Or it's the true test egg. of. That's good for you. True but. test of. Well, man. Raw, yeah, raw egg. A raw lot of egg isn't do good that. for you. It's not good for you, but no, a lot I of people remember, do I remember that. the shell and everything. I just meant. Oh. Well, no, you, the difference is that you can't eat eggshells. You shouldn't. But with an, an onion, you can eat all can't of it. But would you? I've seen Bear no, Grylls do it. Eggshells. Yeah, for, I saw Bear Grylls eat a bunch of bird eggs, and he said that it's good because of the calcium in the eggshell. I don't know how much of that is he true. He says that about everything. He yeah, says he, everything has He calcium. also drinks snake piss. Like <laughs> <laughs> He's a yeah. little extreme. Yes, and that needs to be studied. Maybe it's a superfood snake piss. You don't know. <laughs> he's still alive, so he's doing something right. Yeah, that's true. A lot of that show, though, from what I've seen, is fake. Not all of it, but yeah. significant portions. Have you guys seen that? There yeah, was, there's uh, there always was been rumors big, about uh, how when the cameras go off, he just goes into a hotel or something. No, it's it's not that big from what I've seen, but there there was one guy who exposed part of what he was doing. He was in some desert, and he was like, I'm going to have to get across that canyon if I'm going to want to survive because I need to go that way. And he set up like this whole system of like getting stuff over and it was really dramatic and tense. And then a guy found the exact filming location and he panned his camera slightly to the left and there was just a nice little gap you could walk over. Just literally yeah, a single but step. Did he, did he still did he did he still actually do the stunt? Yeah, he did the stunt for the show, but it was very fake. He didn't have to when it's yeah, supposed to be a real survivability fair. show. So what? But every entertainer does that. He's an entertainer. A comedian goes oh, on yeah. stage and tells jokes that are exaggerated and that didn't really happen. 
Oh yeah, I'm I'm not expecting the show to be like absolutely all real content. No reality show on earth is all actual reality. But you would mm. think that for authenticity, he would present what is and isn't set up. You know what I mean? He'd be like, I don't have to do this, but I want to show how you would do it if you had to or something. You know, I've always been more impressed by the cameraman that follows him around and does all the same <laughs> oh, yeah, stunts while more. holding a giant camera. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those cameras are fucking heavy. A lot of people don't know that a shoulder mounted camera is heavy as fuck. Yeah. Props to them. Yeah. Not only do you have to follow this fucker, you have to do all the same things he does, but with a camera on your shoulder. So how how and no one uh, ever knows your name? How involved oh, do you hurt. think they are in the shoots? Though, like, how many people do you think it takes to film those kind of shows and follow them around and this and that? It's not just one camera guy and one sound guy. They probably have a whole crew out there. Yeah, probably think? not that big. I don't know. I have no idea, to be honest. Because I mean, think about it. Be. The more the more people that you send to film him, the more people you have to prepare for those conditions and all that equipment and shit. It's probably super expensive to film a show like that, if you think about it. A lot of gear well, and equipment and shit. The show is called Man vs. Wild, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. go on IMDb. Well, you're at that up. I'm gonna see how many credits there are. Yeah, do that. Did you guys know that he's he's making a new show? I'm pretty sure it's already out on Netflix. It's a choose your own adventure show where you get to choose what oh, that's what cool. survival conditions Bear Grill undertakes. That's really it's cool. Pretty great. Like a uh, Bandersnatch. Like, kind of. Yeah, you can choose for him to kayak like as an example, you can choose for him to him to kayak down a crocodile infested river or walk over like a tightrope above like <laughs> eagles or something <laughs> just like some goofy shit and, so. then, and then you watch him do it but he, he always wins there's no losing for bear grills so not to call There's out bear grills but here's how i know a lot of this stuff is fake is because in the credits they have stunts the uh, stunt coordinator, stunt coordinator two, stunt rigger, stunts. This guy has stunts, man. There you go. <laughs> In other words, we set up these shots for the camera. I can't believe childhood me has been fooled like this. I was duped. I hope when I'm stuck in a survival situation, I'm stuck there with my stunt coordinators, just in case. <laughs> I, I'm stuck in downtown China, and I'm carrying a Winnie the Pooh poster. <laughs> How long can I survive? <laughs> uh, oh, how man. long can i, I, I survive the for, labor camps i would love bear girls to do a like urban spin-off of man versus wild where it's like i'm in north korea he and did. I, every 10 minutes i have to scream i hate kim jong-un oh oh you mean that he did at some point do an urban spin-off though where he was just exploring empty churches and shit trying to survive using trash cans wasn't very good <laughs> Well, that, doesn't, that doesn't sound too hard. Homeless people do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's real. Uh, oh, God. Uh, you, ever think, you ever think that... Uh... Oh, damn it, I lost it. I had an idea. <laughs> it's gone now. Uh, we have several topics if you want to switch gears. Yeah, maybe. We could always go to the, uh, the Extinctioners that we were going to yes, talk we about. We have the Extinctioners and we have... El Chapo's son taking over all of Mexico right now. <laughs> oh yeah, I like both of those. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I don't know much about the extinction um, debacle, whatever that is. So if someone wants to give me a rundown on it, I'd be interested in hearing about it. Uh so Kaya. Yeah, you know the climate change protesters. How there's always going to be extremists. These guys are extremists, but in the most mundane, annoying public nuisance kind of way. You guys remember Ice Poseidon and his crew of live streamers where they would just go around being public nuisances, annoy the shit out of people, have loudspeakers on their chest, blurting bomb threats and the N-word, shit like that, and everybody would be annoyed. Extinction Rebellion is that, mm -hmm. just environmentalist, where they block traffic, they glue themselves to trains, to cars, to the road, and... Sometimes they block entry to like uh, burger joints and shit and they just harass people, harass customers and citizens. And people have just been getting really, really pissed off at them because obviously people want to, you know, go to work, be yeah. able to go to work and pick up their kids and eat. The thing that they don't realize, the big fundamental flaw in their protest is you need to get the common man on your side or you will fail. There's a reason that, like, if you go to a big convention center, the, the God protesters, the ones that like God hates gay people and shit, they don't block the entrance 
because they know that if they do that, no one's going to support them at all or even give a shit. But these people, they're they're actively trying to stop people throughout their day and ruin their fucking lives. It's What's not, their goal? Uh, apparently, attention. I looked into it. It, it. Well, of course, it's attention. But their ultimate goal is to force Congress to act on issues such as climate change, biodiversity loss and other uh, so cultural issues so, with the climate. So if they're trying to get Congress's attention, they're trying to stop or hinder society from functioning to get right. Congress's Which attention. Which is like the right. stupidest so fucking thing in the world because everyone's just well, going to be uh, pissed off at you and not care what your message is. But then, so they're not really targeting the general population. No, they are. To so that's the, that's the stupidity part of it, right? If you're trying to ch- convince Congress, aren't mm. there any lawmakers or CEOs whose cars you can glue yourself to? Why are you fucking with the common citizen? Mm. You exactly. think Bob the plumber, you yeah. think Bob uh, decides how much toxic waste is getting dumped into the oceans or how much energy Google servers are going to use this year? No, go f- fuck with the, uh, your politicians. Why are you fucking with normal people? And so they get angry. This was in London. I think so one of the videos was these idiots, two of them climbed on top of those trains. Uh, that, <laughs> you know, people, it's, it's like six in the morning. People are just trying to go to work and these assholes are jumping on top of the train, holding up the train and everybody was getting pissed off, really pissed off. So they dragged one of them down and he was trying to kick, kick people, the citizens, and then they beat the shit out of him, I think. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's mind numbingly selfish. Imagine you're Joe somebody and you go, boy, my sick mother who's dying of cancer in the hospital. Today I get to visit her. It's been a real stressful and busy time, but now I can finally hop on the train and go witness her last moments. Oh, what's this? Some jackass thinks it's too hot outside and now I can't get to the hospital. Great. Thank you. It's not just it, that, it's, it's simply an over, under, it, oversimplification it's a, of what, what he's uh, angry of, about. Of course. It's a bit hot outside. Uh, of course it's <laughs> oversimplified, but the, the point is that it's a very selfish protest. It's not working for the good of people. It's working well, against Some would them. argue that trying to save the future of humanity is the most noble objective. Yeah, but Andrew. look, I, I get a lot of protests. I get the Hong Kong thing. I get the protesters in France where they're the Yellow Wests. I get all that. But when you're standing in front of a burger joint and some guy tries to get past you and you physically try, you know, you shoulder bump him, you push him away. And then when he tries to make his way through, you grab him by the arm and you yank him back. At that point, you deserve an ass kicking. Totally agree. You yes, want, you, absolutely. Because that's not a protest anymore. At that point, you're just trying to enforce your own law. You're just, you're mm-hmm. literally physically and violently trying to curtail someone's, obstruct someone's freedom to just have a fucking burger or just to use the road. And I have been in that position. You know, people always mention the, well, what if a, a, a hospital thing, the car, what are they called? Ambulance. What if an ambulance has ambulance. to drive and you're blocking the road? Yeah, what if, man, I've been in the position where I had to like pick up my sick mom from the airport. Right, because she was just uh, through her last round of chemo and she's finally back and she called me and wanted me to pick her up. If I had to go to the train and some asshole was just jumping around on the train, just being a monkey for attention, holding up the train for hours, I would be pretty pissed off too, dude. I'd get a lick in, uh, on him too, like a kick or two. Yeah. I, I, oh, for sure. I'm not against the idea of large scale protesting. Like you can totally organize groups to stand on whatever street corner or going in front of whatever building. But that's the key words there. Street corner in front of a building. Don't disrupt the flow or you will never get anyone on your side. That's all there is to it. That's where you're wrong. Do you know how many unemployed people there are in the world, Andrew? They have nothing better to do. <laughs> Fair point. They found their cause just to be an they asshole. They need to contribute to society somehow, and that's by destroying it. It's just so I just, stupid. I just see the mentality, man. I, I get it. I even understand some of the mentality behind a violent protest. Okay, but... Fuck with the state. Fuck with the henchmen yeah. of the state. Yeah. Go, go fuck with the Go CEOs. to the oil factories. Could you yeah, imagine right. how much actual shit they could get done if they looked up their local representatives and just went to their office? 
Like, oh my god, I know. They're so exactly. fucking lazy. They won't even bother. Think Why aren't you stopping little... the politician from entering his office? Why are you stopping me yeah, from like, getting you're... a burger? That doesn't make sense, man. Think about would... it. You're a, you're a fucking senator or a lower level politician, and all of a sudden you're trying to go to work, and when you get to your office, there's hundreds of people outside your door. Wouldn't that cause something to happen more than this fucking street blocking bullshit? Well, I probably on. can't get into the White House or wherever the yeah, but there's medicines. representatives in your state. <laughs> there's they more than just in the White yeah. House. <laughs> yeah. You don't have well, to protest uh, Trump that, that personally. The the power. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't have to start go to at your the local, top. Start with your, yeah, start s- small. Go to your local mayor's office and protest his shit. Uh, shank his car exactly. tires. Why well, are you doing this? Get anything done. <laughs> <laughs> find that, the, no, fu- find no, the fucking stop, governor's office. Stop the metro. And maybe that'll get his attention. It's so this attention. protest, ironically, where the big wigs go. I think everyone by default cares about the environment. Nobody's like, oh fuck, Mother Nature, fuck her, fuck her right exactly. in the ass. But out of spite, these people have done more negative, more to hurt the environmentalism cause than anything ever before. People at this point are just spiteful. They just hate you. You've turned away more people from environmentalism than anything. That's a really fucking anything. good point. Yeah. If, well, public transport is one of the most, like, beneficial things to the environment. Why are they stopping people from using trains? Because they're fucking dumb. They're protesting. That's all they can do, Jackson. They're protesting against the people who are on their side. <laughs> I don't know why. (laughs) They're so bafflingly fucking dumb. If they were at a car manufacturer, they went to like an automobile factory or something, that would make a lot of sense. Cars cause a lot of pollution and public transport's way better. Why the fuck are you protesting the subway, one of the most efficient public (laughs) transportation systems we have? How possibly fucking stupid are you? (laughs) My God. I guess you just don't care about the environment, Andrew. <laughs> mm-hmm. Isn't You're it right. funny how, I don't know how old you guys were when the Westboro Baptist Church was at its height, but it's funny to me how now they look so benign compared to so many protesters today. At the time, we thought, dude, the Westboro Baptist Church, this is beyond the pale. These guys are fucked up there. They're going to people's funerals and shouting protests, uh, insulting the widow and such. But at least they were standing to the side with their goofy little pan cards and that was exactly. it. Exactly. That's it's the crazy. big difference. They didn't actually do anything. They would stand there, they'd want yeah. uh, they'd want you to fight so that you could they could sue you, any of that shit, but at the end of the day they didn't do anything. They were just annoying. These guys So are, what you're saying is the West Barrow Baptist Church should have done more. <laughs> yeah, they failed. <laughs> <laughs> are they still active i haven't we haven't seen no, much so of anything from them like fred their, phelps. their leader died and re- denounced them yeah fred uh, phelps. supposedly gotcha. yeah we don't know if that's real that or not but yeah I mean, they are a non-factor these days oh god they would be dead too i mean i think they had like 12 members and they were all inbred they were all the same family intermarrying and yeah it was something like a even ranch. at that time i think they were all 70 years old I, I highly doubt they still have anything going. <laughs> they couldn't be. They wouldn't be able to compete with modern protests anyway. They were never hardcore enough. Oh yeah, they get their asses kicked. Yeah, they just didn't have heart. <laughs> they just didn't have Twitter. <laughs> they didn't try hard enough. They just didn't care about the cause. I just hate. I hate people like that, man. They stand in the fucking street with their signs singing. Going, we're the good guys. We're so peaceful. And then the guy gets mad and throws their sign away and gets pissed. And they think he's a bad person. It's like, uh. Ow. The guy was a nurse, too. Yeah. Like, like that's another good point. So uh, the video I'm referencing, I'm sure most of you have seen, where uh, it's the same protesters and a guy gets out of his car and he rips up their sign and he, like, shouts at them to get the fuck out of the way. He's a nurse. He's literally actively going to work so he can save lives. And you're stopping that. Fuck you. Uh, man, f- a lot of fun uh. topics this week. So let's switch gears to El Chapo's son taking over Mexico. <laughs> have you have you guys yeah, seen that? That was so cool. Armed... I mean, it sucked for Mexico. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't yeah. know anything about this. So fill us all in. Well, you know how El Chapo got arrested and now he's... I think it got actually convicted. I don't know how they pulled that rabbit out of their hats, but they actually managed to get enough people in the jury to not fear for their lives and to vote that he's guilty. <laughs> so I think they convicted him. El Chapo's in prison now. And his son took over. Um, 
Fuck, I'm blanking on his name again. I think it's Ovidio Guzman Lopez. And El Chapo's son, Ovidio, it seems like he's even more powerful than his dad that he replaced because the uh, the military arrested him and then they released him because they were scared of repercussions if they kept him in, in custody. But no, the, the reper- they weren't scared of repercussions. The repercussions happened. Yeah, right. The, they got the, an the, uh, took over a city. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally, yeah, so- just recently, eight people were killed in a fucking cartel seizure. <laughs> they're they're definitely <laughs> taking action. Action. There's a there's a bunch of videos now on the internet floating around of Mexico where uh, there's armed conflict between the military and the cartel, and it it looks like the military is outgunned by the cartel, who have more modern <laughs> weaponry. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. So uh, what is he trying to do? Like, is he just trying to get his dad out of jail? What's his What's his goal right now? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, I guess occasionally they just get into this little into these little tiffs, the Mexican military and the cartel. Wow. <laughs> well, all right. Let me let, let me lay down the facts real quick. So the the police captured accidentally captured El Chapo's son. <laughs> they didn't know that he was going to be there as a part of their police sting where they captured some cartel members. They accidentally caught the sun and then the cartel <laughs> responded by sending an armed infantry to take over a city where, where those police were, I believe. And then the police had to release El Chapo's son to kind of uh, stop stop the fighting because they were hopelessly outgunned. God, this is so so cool. they didn't even know that they were going to catch El Chapo's son and it led to a giant conflict uh, it, it looked like a war zone it was insane they've got giant machine yeah. guns on on back of trucks and shit the, the, there's a convoy a video of a convoy of utes like driving into the city with all guns over them it's crazy I, I, I sent you guys it's a crazy. video it's yeah. a bunch of cartel members sitting in a car listening to some latin pop and you can see all these military great machine guns and a rocket launcher. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're just going. They, they are casually they are driving to a war zone. <laughs> they are unironically the shit you would see in Call of Duty. Those big fucking machine guns. Good God. Everyone's like, how how did they get their hands on like U.S. military great weaponry? How did this happen? The cartel oh is Lord. fucking goofy. Uh, this is fucking terrifying. It's crazy, man. I, I said this before we started the show, but it's insane how far above the law the cartel is just how powerful they are even beyond the corruption i mean and even you know as we all know the the government in latin america is always generally very corrupt and they just give the cartel a pass because they're scared of the repercussions and they get paid handsomely but even when they decide not to be corrupt and there's conflict they are desperately oh outgunned there's a f- the fucking guy in the back of the truck with a 50 caliber mounted machine gun. Yeah. That's absurd. <laughs> it's insane. That's the thing where one had, bullet had can tear a fucking too. man in half. Good they God. had armored trucks too, like bulletproof vans, just driving around shooting shit up. And it was it was coordinated as well. Like they had cartel members in bulletproof vests going into hotels. You kind of coordinating the civilians to safe areas. Like I don't think they would Fuck. necessarily wanted to hurt civilians. They were directing directing them away and into safe environments so that they could <laughs> shoot, <laughs> like ha- have a have a like little paintball session with the with the cops. Oh my! God. It was like, it was insane. <laughs> so at what point do you guys think these guys are actually just going to take over the government and become the government? It could easily happen. They could easily do an actual coup and just start I mean, a new fucking government. I'm not even sure that it already hasn't happened. Like, it shouldn't be this easy. God. They just <laughs> kind of drove into the city and got what they wanted. There's, there's a video. There, there was a video circulating on Twitter of like the border control, like uh, the cartel members, like driving up to border security, like uh, the police or whatever. And they were just having a good time. Like this was after the fighting had stopped. They were just shaking hands with the cops, just like <laughs> chilling with them. Oh my God, <laughs> just kind of like, like, all right, the fighting's over. Now we now we can chill again, I guess. <laughs> wow. Dude, imagine being so powerful weird. 
did you getting like I don't know, you get pulled over by a cop for a DUI or something, or your blinker is broken and a war breaks out. <laughs> your men just show up with these <laughs> M14s, like, how dare you? And start shooting the military. <laughs> the cops <laughs> profusely apologizing. I didn't know. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. God, that, yeah, that feeling must be pretty cool. <laughs> so I was, uh, talking with the listeners before we started how much like would you guys accept a deal with el chapo the sinaloa cartel if they promised us to make our podcast 10 times bigger no i would never want to do that i'd be way too scary <laughs> yeah, i'd be I, so on edge I, I gotta be honest if if i did that for the rest of my life i would fear for talking about certain things on the show because i think they'd send a fucking hitman to my house <laughs> yeah yeah if we say anything even remotely that they don't like exactly yeah. <laughs> oh man I don't know. I, I, so I feel like I go, scary. dude, I'll do whatever you like. Just get, get us on Joe Rogan. Can you do that? And Chapo, you know, Guzman, whatever his name is, uh, Ovidio Guzman Lopez, he'd be like, yeah, sure, we can do that. Hold a gun to Wait, Joe I, Rogan's I know, head. I know what we should do. The Extinctioners should go to Mexico and protest uh, the gun violence by trying to stop the cartel trucks. Ooh, you block that road. Yeah. Yeah, block, the, lay down block that road. road. <laughs> see how, <laughs> see how far get it gets you. Over immediately. <laughs> they don't even slow down. <laughs> <laughs> don't even notice this. <laughs> That's one thing I think about a lot with these protests. Like, a lot of them are, like, aiming yeah. at America and, like, the speech laws and stuff as a whole. But the only reason they're allowed to do it is because of those laws. If they go anywhere else in the world, they just get massacred. Oh, yeah. <laughs> literally yeah. killed. There are, there are so many countries on Earth where you literally write a bad article on a website or a newspaper and you just go to jail. That's it. Or you like Bye. the wrong tweet. Yeah. As has yeah. happened in a country that shall remain unnamed. But these delusional people can't wrap their head around that. They think America's like the biggest shithole on the planet. Do I have to That's break why I think you the, guys... Do I have to, it's not perfect. Do I have to no, break no, out the catchphrase right. again? Anything can be improved. Do I have to break out yeah, the, but they, the slogan? If you're not being shot at every day, you live a pretty fucking good life. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. I, Fuck I these really. people. I hate them so much. I, I don't think that that should lead itself to like complacency or whatever. No, of course how... not. But it should lead to smart protesting and actually getting issues. You know, not Productive doing these protesting. Yeah, yeah not these complacency yeah. when you when you like free speech. It's the opposite. It's, it's just counterproductive when you protest against it. You're making it, it sound like complacency when you're saying stuff like. Like you, you've got it good in America, so don't ever complain about it. No, anything. no, no, uh, that's not. No, he's not saying all. don't complain about anything. It just maybe don't act as if you have it worse than some yeah. slum in Morocco. Look, all I'm saying is that I don't think the people in the middle of the cartel gunfights give that much of a shit about <laughs> climate change right now. I'm just saying. <laughs> or offensive words. I don't think any of them have been asking pronouns. Well, maybe pronouns. they would have been in that situation if they did care, Andrew. Maybe <laughs> yeah, this is all global warming's it fault. <laughs> it's too hot in Mexico and everyone's pissed. Oh, uh, didn't they try to make that point at some, some place, is it like BuzzFeed or Vox, where uh, global warming caused ISIS? Really? I swear to God, this happens. That sounds like BuzzFeed. Uh, climate change and water woes drove ISIS recruiting. Climate change will fuel terrorism recruitment. <laughs> awesome. Jesus. Uh, Soon it'll be the Joker movie. Yep, yeah, that's true. I still have to see that. I still Did have to be created terrorism. To yeah, didn't you buy tickets? Yeah, but a certain fat person reminded me I had agreed to something else previously, so I had to skip the show oh. to record. Because I'm a good friend. That's so nice. Uh mm huh. Whoop de doo for me. <laughs> God damn. Just cartel violence is scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, going back to that subject, I would not, I would not want to be associated with anything like that. It, the mafia, anything, anything, anything underworld, because they, they, they can turn on you like that. Yeah, and then you, then you end up in seventeen different uh, garbage bags. The mafia is more like a family though than a cartel, I'd imagine. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. Aren't mafias generally, yeah, which, they start as a, I don't know, some sort of a family thing? 
It stays yeah, in the family. Yeah, right. Italian family. Mafia. Yeah. Yeah. But they're still criminals, so it kind of... I, I uh, feel I don't like think it matters that much. I feel like cartels are the scariest though because they don't seem to give a shit about any form of like I, what's the word for it? Like if you if you piss off the mafia, yeah, they'll break your shin or they'll they'll steal your money and extort you or something. But or they'll be like they'll beat you up and then they'll go, "Don't let this happen again." You piss off the cartel, they're going to like <laughs> dismember you and and then throw you in a fucking dog cage. Like that kind of shit, you know what I mean? It's a little Dude, more extreme. I don't know. The, the, maf the mafia is pretty fucked up as well. I was reading a book on the plane about some dude named, I think he's the Iceman. His name was Richard, Richard yeah. 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 Oh, dude, Kuklinski. he's a pussy compared to the cartel. Really? He still dismembered people and fed them to rats and shit. But like, think about he it. Those are the like mafia. the those are the targets. Those are the people that are like they want them taken out. That was his job. Whereas with the cartel, you could be little Susie Q down the block, but if you accidentally step on a cartel member's shoes, you're gonna end up like sailing down the river with cement shoes. You know what I'm saying? Did the cartel. I mean, even compared to mm. ISIS, ISIS does all that fucked up shit. But then, ISIS at least only recruits people from. I don't know, like a bunch of disenfranchised young men is what they recruit most of the time. Whereas the cartel raises their members. They take their children and just to desensitize them to violence, they have little kids skin human beings alive and kill them when they're like seven years old, just to get them accustomed to violence. I wish we could like put them all in a big arena, like the most violent cartel <laughs> hitmen, the like cartel enforcers, ISIS members and the mafia or something and see who, who comes out on top they all get to choose their favorite we, weapon hmm. do you think we should have gladiatory style gladi gladiator style games brought back for prisoners like yes. hey if you want to shave five well, years off you can compete in the thunderdome eh, no, yeah, shave five years off or die not all well, prisoners I mean, a life not sentence. like if you're in for weed or something no but if you're a serial killer yeah a piece of shit rapist. Yeah, then yes. Don't even give them the choice. Fuck them. Let them fight. <laughs> well, what if they don't <laughs> fight? Then they get, then they die. And the other guy, guy gets <laughs> yeah, five years off. That's not really an option. They should put some passion behind yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just putting out a contract on them. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever kills them gets five years off. <laughs> it's uh, a fucking hit. Sponsored by the government. <laughs> yeah, brought to you by like honey yeah. and apron. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that brought to you by brand a or brand b there you go yeah. oh, that's better <laughs> we don't want to burn any bridges now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 combat stuff yeah for like death row inmates and like actual pieces of shit i, I think that could be nothing but a good thing some of them will saves probably everyone money time resources some of them probably want to do it Honestly. Oh, for sure, yeah. No, absolutely. It'll give them anything to do besides solitary confinement anyway. I, so they'd, they'd agree to I it. I would be perfectly okay with it, 100%, if it was consensual. Like, if, if the participants in it were, they signed a waiver and they agreed to do it, I'd then say, go nuts, all on you. Nah, I wouldn't even care about that, think? really. I mean, if... It doesn't even have to be hard as criminals. <laughs> if, it's, if it's Jeffrey Epstein, I'm not going to wait for him to sign a waiver. Just I'm going to throw him into the gladiator ring with the lions and go. Maybe give him a spear and say, go. Defend yourself. Well, Epstein's kind of a... He'd be like a pipsqueak, wouldn't he? Yeah, not he's still. Dead. Fun Before to watch died, him get it doesn't. That doesn't mean it wouldn't be a good battle, though, or a good show. Yeah, that's true. You can make him run around, do, you can make uh, him squeal like a pig. Yeah, we need to we need to do something like Dead Man Wonderland, where we take the prison and make it a theme park and have them do a bunch of events and tournaments and shit. I think that'd be great. Yeah. It's more profitable than sneaking Ooh. an assassin into prison and having him choked. So when is our, our serial killer fighting game coming out, game developers? When do I get to have a match between Gacy and Dahmer? do super combos on each other. It's kind of funny they don't touch those things ever at all. Like yeah. real fucked up people. I mean, fi <laughs> Mortal Kombat could have had a Hitler at this point, but I guess that would be too controversial. <laughs> <laughs> Coming this month with this season pass, the Joker, the Terminator, and Hitler. <laughs> 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 What's well, a special move he gasses you in an oven? Yeah. yeah. 
That's the best idea I've ever heard. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you <laughs> will go it, down Terminator. It, <laughs> what it, Hitler's in Mortal Kombat, and he's top tier, so you're watching Evo, and it's Hitler mirror matches. <laughs> <laughs> they have different oh, color he's skins. With the, yeah, different skins. Different. He wears different uniforms from German military history. Ooh, what would his skins be? What would his different variations be in a Mortal Kombat game? <laughs> one one of them would be the DLC DLC skin. He's dressed as a rabbi. Just Ooh, yeah, like alternate universe, like opposite Hitler, where he's wearing the Auschwitz uniform as a prisoner. He has a tattoo with the number on <laughs> it. There needs to be a Mecha Hitler. Like oh, of Godzilla. course. Oh yeah, yeah, Mecha robot Hitler. Hitler. Yeah, For sure. yeah, definitely. What, oh, what about, like, and then uh, good the, good Hitler, where he where he didn't kill the Jews and oh, he's where, a nice guy, artist yeah. Hitler. Yeah, where <laughs> he did achieve his dream of becoming a famous artist. Yeah, he has a artist brush. Hitler for sure. Then then there'd be yeah there'd be alternate history uh, Hitler where he's allied, so he wears like the American flag as a cape and shit. Ooh, that will be controversial. I don't think that's gonna pass. <laughs> He's shaking hands with Obama, their best buddies. <laughs> oh, so so that one's not okay, but the one where he's a literal Auschwitz member is fine. <laughs> hey, to me, both yeah, are fine. Irony. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if he has a fatality where Trump joins him. I don't give a shit if it's funny. <laughs> Oh man, that that would be something the gaming industry would absolutely do. If Hitler was in their game, they'd go and look who's helping him as like a big <laughs> political movement. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, oh, dude, man. they should do that. Come on, Mortal Kombat, you gotta get your balls back. You're supposed to be the edgy, mature fighting game. Let's see it. Put it up. Edgy, mature fighting game, hey? Well, that's what it was marketed very edgy. when aren't, it came out. Aren't they the ones who just, just like, uh, they were putting women in clothing so they're uh, well yeah now they, that's what i'm saying they they lost their balls back when they first came uh, out and when they were in their heyday they they did a lot of edgy shit they were i mean literally yeah. they got the esrb started to rate games so kids couldn't buy them because they were too graphic and violent and uh, now they're literally adding clothes to their female models because they're like oh titties. were they edgy for the sake of being edgy though or they were, were they just doing something they enjoyed that was edgy at the time you know they weren't actively trying to make something edgy see that i don't know i mean the 90s in general had a very edgy because putting hitler in your game would you, you'd know that that's edgy <laughs> you're doing it for the sake of being edgy at that point not yeah, because your your craft needs it <laughs> I don't see anything wrong with that if you want to just be... Someone has to be edgy, right? Someone has yeah. to be a little subversive and not be just boring like the mainstream. Just put Hitler in your game. Come on. Yeah, the people who are edgy let Come us on, know Netherrealm. what we're okay with. So if they're, if they're the ones doing it and we say that's edgy, then we know what is and isn't crossing a line. It's helpful. Yeah. I just don't really see much merit in edginess. All I'm saying I is I want a Kickstarter, or not a Kickstarter, a, a fucking petition.org, put Hitler in Mortal Kombat. That's all I'm saying. Put him in I everything. Sign it. Put him in Game of Thrones too. Remake the last <laughs> season. I want him to be the Dragon Queen. <laughs> Hitler riding around on dragons. <laughs> Dracaris, yeah? Now you burn. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Juden. All right. Oh, man. Tell us what skins you would make for Hitler. I, we gotta wrap this up. I gotta go. Uh, we've we've gotta wrap this up for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, go Charlie, to. you wanna do the outro? All right. You always yeah. do the outro. What do you mean? All right. Thanks everyone for listening to this week's episode of the official podcast. Patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes. We're on a time crunch. We gotta go. So thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Uh, leave your favorite. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Leave your best idea for a Hitler skin in the comments someplace. Reddit, Discord. Bye. Yeah. Bye.